Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so what you are looking at there is zinc oxide coated onto brass, and you are seeing the tracks of microball lightning. And these are charge clusters, and I believe some of what you are seeing are these moving across the surface and interacting with the deposited carbon from the um, uh, candle, which I'm, uh, I must uh, say again, as I did in Szczecin in Poland, this is a, an inspired idea and I can't believe I didn't think of it before you. <laughs> so congratulations, it's a very good idea. So um, this was produced using a um, experiment called the Vega, where we have between 100 and 700 volts, um, 100 to 200 DC bias, and then pulses of a few hundred volts. And a happy accident occurred where there were sheets of brass on top of other brass, and it produced fluidized electrons, ball lightning, in the cathode in the gap between two sheets of brass and this fluidized electrons bled out in a magnetic fluid producing this worm-like structure you see on the left now the key structures that i'm going to show you are in the outside area of the main channels now this is a magnetic fluid this is ferromagnetic fluid and you can see the way it arranges itself. This is the central channel of the Vega Valley, and this is the inverse of that, where it's a magnetic fluid of this fluidized electrons. This is the boundary layer of one of those channels, and you can see it's a reg regular Maxwell-type superfluid arrangement. And there are pairs and the pairs are twisted as they come out from the boundary layer. This will be relevant in a minute. In the center of these overall charge cluster structures, you have a magnetic core. This is iron and oxygen in the magnetic core. What you have on the base here is copper oxide, which is diamagnetic, and you have zinc oxide on the outside, which is diamagnetic. They do not like to be inside this structure, but Magnetic things can be inside this structure. Now, we're referring to your example of the automotive exhaust. This is an image that I took last week in London with a thing called the thunderstorm generator. And this is a attached to a 400 kilowatt gas ter, uh, generator. Um, and this is a section of a very large sphere where you see these re regular hexagonal structures, very similar to this, but about 1.7 millimeters across, arranged on the inside. The structures, I believe, are monopole in nature, and they take the same form as the well-published monopole from An A A Alto University. And it has this sacred geometry structure with the boundary, the, the non-radiating boundary of the ball lightning extending here, you have the Vesica Pisces in the center, and you have a toroidal structure in the middle. Our structure completely matches the theoretical and experimental, and more uh, the experimental observations of Alto University. It also explains the observations of this weak point here, where we see ejection of new elements like titanium disks here and carbon, okay? And this is in HHO on... Um, with Stobard and Stankovic with the ejection of carbon and stuff from a silicon ball. And this is a ball lightning broken up. So outside of a very large ball lightning cut like this, you see two, three, four, five, six, eight type structures in the near boundary. These are structures that are carried along by a larger ball lightning charge cluster structure. This is a 4-4 a four -four type structure. Now, this is why I got so excited when I saw your presentation earlier this year, because this is a three sub tour and a something like a 15 overall tour structure. And it is carrying along lumps of copper with it, and it's leaving a trail of carbon.
the carbon does not go into the structure into its non-radiating boundary because it is diamagnetic. Neither does the copper. But this, these structures are generally comprised when they collapse of calcium and oxygen. Calcium and oxygen and calcium oxide are all paramagnetic. So they can live within these structures. Now you don't need to have anything at all in these structures. But here again, this is a larger one with carbon around side, and this is a fragment. So they can break up and be self-similar. Sometimes they don't have anything in them at all. And I believe that's what you're observing in some of your, your experiments. Here are ball lightning that are synthesized in a version of the Vega experiment, and it's colliding with silicon dioxide. And we have everything from pentagonal to hexagonal to octagonal to multi-polygonal and even triangular structures because of the subtors. And this has affected the material it's collided with. Moreover, it has these little tentacles that come out. Here is a large one, which was also on that ball lightning cut. This is broken down and uh, you have the central core here. It's, um, uh, it's broken off, but in this section over here, these are kind of a random array of iron. This is a, a polygonal structure, but it has these, these feelers, these tentacles that come off, which you could imagine would brush across the surface. Here is a close up. This is in a, a cavitation experiment. Anyway, so this is also cavitation. And around these circular structures, you have these tails of these tracks. Here is a close up. There's a circular structure with tails and they only extend a certain distance. So if you can imagine these traveling around, they would leave tracks like you have observed. Here is the closer version of those tracks. Now, the actual ball lightning structure itself, this is one such example. You can see it's very small. It's leaving a track, I believe, because this is multiple stru uh, structures orbiting around a larger collective structure. And this is, this is under SEM. This is a close-up of this track down track mark here. This one was captured from the same fuel I showed you earlier um, using a masked webcam. And on the webcam, it recorded this 100 micron wide structure on the CCD. This is literally impossible to be three body abrasion that I warned this community about two to three years ago about um, so-called fake uh, strange radiation tracks. Now, if you look at this 100 micron structure, it is exactly the form of the arrangement of the substructures on this copper oxide in a different experiment. Moreover, if you look at the work of Matsumoto, exactly the right scale of his uh, itonic cluster, you can imagine this rolling around on the surface and this interacting with the surface, leaving these zigzag tracks. This was produced in uh, explosive one point cold fusion. Uh, and this is our replication in cavitation in um, uh, Japan. And so it's the same kind of structure. If these things were rolling around on the surface, you would imagine that they would produce these kind of tracks. And so that that is... Uh, my talk, but essentially the most important part is, um, if I play again, um, I believe you're seeing something like this. You cannot always see the tracks. They may present themselves as a collapsed object. Um, like these kind of objects, or they may not. They may just leave a mark like these but they can still carry material with them and bash it into the surface as it goes. So that, that's, that's my commentary. Um, I think the use of carbon is absolutely perfect for these things because it can be picked up. It orbits around the structure like these ones. Uh, where is it? Uh, these structures here are close to the very large ball lightning it can be attracted. These structures get attracted to each other. And so if this large ball lightning was moving, there could be things orbiting around it or in its close proximity. 
that can do damage. I mean, they're literally eating this copper uh, 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 away in in this on this boundary area. So uh, that is my uh, comments on on or um, <laughs> about. Thank you.